Wendy Chamberlain, the Lib Dem MP for North East Fife and the Liberal Democrat Chief Whip, joins me now from their party conference in Bournemouth. Wendy, thank you for your time, because I know you're busy at conference. I know what it's like. You're here, there and everywhere. Now, we've seen from Ed Davey this morning, he's given an interview to The Observer where he says he's going to smash through the blue wall. So tell me, how many seats are you hoping to win at the next general election, Wendy? Well, obviously, Ed was pointing to our four by-election victories that we've had since 2019. And, and you may remember Cheshire and Amersham, that was the first of our stunts with that blue wall. But I think it's quickly developed as a narrative because it's quite clear that we have the opportunity. There were 80 seats that we were seconds to the Conservatives in, in 2019. But there's a number of seats now where we believe that we can beat the Conservatives. So, Camilla, I'm not going to put a number on it, but what I would say is we're working really hard. We're realistic about the targets that we're working for. And I think we've got a really credible set of parliamentary candidates who I've been meeting with already this weekend. Do you think the public are sure of your policies, though, Wendy? It's interesting you mention Amersham and Chesham. That's very near my neck of the woods. I live very nearby. <laughs> and I was a bit confused by the Liberal Democrat campaign because in the manifesto, you speak about your continued commitment to HS2. And then, lo and behold, when you campaigned in Chesham and Amersham, you were anti-HS2 in your leaflets. So which is it? Are you pro the rail project or anti? Well, Camilla, you'll maybe remember, given it's so close to you, that Cheryl Gillan, who was the Conservative MP in Cheshire and Amersham before Sarah Green, despite the fact that the Conservative position then was to support HS2, was opposed to it. And she was opposed to it on the basis of her constituent. And Sarah Green, now the MP in Cheshire and Amersham, representing our constituents in that way. But in relation to HS2, I think for me, as, as, as a Scottish politician, where we need to look at UK-wide infrastructure and improve that, and improve services in the north, which have long been neglected, I think there is still a case for HS2, and I think it's short-sighted of the government to be moving back from those commitments. I think for those in the north, it's a, it's a betrayal. If uh, the Liberal Democrats are in a stronger position come the next general election, be that in the spring or indeed autumn next year, say if you were in some kind of confidence and supply situation with Labour, would you insist that the HS2 project continues? Look, I'm not going to talk about what comes after the election or conference supply. In fact, I think Ed Davey's been really clear that there are no facts and deals. And I think you'll have to look at in campaign mid bedfordshire to understand that. But, uh, you know, as a public position, we are committed to HS2 because we believe that what has long been neglected is the infrastructure to deliver the productivity and economic benefits that the UK desperately needs. The government okay. has stepped away from levelling up. It's meaningless. OK, another issue of confusion for me because of what your colleague Leila Moran, who's the foreign affairs spokeswoman, said yesterday. We want to rejoin the EU, she told a fringe meeting at conference. Yet at the same time, Ed Davey says you don't. Who's right, Leila Moran or Ed Davey? So, Camilla, we, as you know, the Liberal Democrats are very interested in policy and that's what we're debating in the coming days. And we have a four-point plan in relation to uh, how we rebuild our relationship. Europe. And I think that's the thing that's really key. Um, we didn't vote for Boris Johnson's oven ready deal. Everybody believes that Brexit is not working, regardless of what your position was before the referendum. So what the Liberal Democrats are focused on is rebuilding that relationship with Europe so that we can then look at other things in the future. But we have to be focused on that in the first instance. But Wendy, to what extent? I think the quote, we want to rejoin, is unequivocal from Leila Moran, isn't it? Well, what I would say is, go back to our four-point plan. We need to rebuild that relationship. This is not... It's, it's easy to use words like rejoin or single market. This is really complicated. Not only have we... And, and that's what the Conservatives completely failed to uh, appreciate, particularly under Boris Johnson, hence the oven-ready deal. But we're in a position now where not only is our economy suffering as a result of Brexit, but the trust and relationships that we had with our European neighbours have been damaged as well. This is a, a long-term project. OK. I also noted that yesterday the Liberal Democrat conference passed a motion insisting that menstruation affects non-binary and trans people. Therefore, the language around women menstruating should be changed to people who menstruate. Are the Lib Dems trying to erase women? Camilla, that's not quite right. The, the policy was particularly in relation to period poverty, and I'm sure both you and I will be completely aligned on the need to address that. We know that one in five women has issues in relation to period poverty where they can't afford a, a, a period products, they can't gain access to them, and that's what our policy motive was focused on yesterday. But what's this phrase, people who menstruate? Isn't that also known as women? 
women and people who are trans. It's a very small proportion of the population. But what I'm saying to you is, is that policy was about period poverty. And I'm pretty no, sure I you, get that. you and I can both agree about the need to, to address that. I know, that. but have you removed women and changed it to people who menstruate? Because why not no, say women we haven't and... Removed it. We haven't removed women at all. I mean, I know women and girls uh, struggle with this issue, but I think we also have to make sure that we are inclusive and we make sure that we're considering everybody in our policy making. Do you know many men who menstruate, though? Gimala, we're talking about period poverty. I think it was a really strong, powerful... And, and I really wish you had been there. You should look it back on YouTube to hear the debate because right. we were very focused on that challenge. OK, quick yes-no answer, if you don't mind, to finish, Wendy. Are you going to be advocating votes for 16- and 17-year-olds like Labour? I'm uh, the co-chair of the all-party parliamentary group for votes at 16, alongside the father of the House of Peter Bottomley. So that's, so that's a yes. A yes. <laughs> All right. Lovely to have an unequivocal answer at the end, Wendy. Enjoy the rest of conference. Lovely to see you this morning. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.